Hey guys, Dad Drayton here. We got my uh, podcast mic set up, so <laughs> that audio booming. Today I was thinking about after I had this great conversation with these two people, Kiel and Andy. Shout out to them. I want to primarily focus on consciousness, and I need to be able to always be able to keep it at a simple level. Because one, I'm able to grow from it myself. Because for me to put in the simple words, I understand it on a subconscious level. But also to be able to spread it. I don't have to worry about it being in a preaching manner. It's not something that I need to convince to people. It's things I already know is true and that other people can resonate with just because it's universal truth. And so with that knowledge, I would wrote this thing just uh, a few minutes ago before I took a shower. How to transition between the consciousness levels. So let's start with the third dimension, of course, the physical reality, the people whose vibrational frequency is aligned with Earth, what uh, in spirituality, they just refer to them as earth minded or the animalistic side of humanity, where we see things through the lens of survival and uh, understanding things from reference first before we're able to make our own decision. And the decisions we do make on our own are based on impulse. I simply filtered it down to the third dimension. Basically, you're unconscious of spirit within body. OK, so what does that mean? You're not aware that you're here for a reason. You're not aware that there's a linearity to the chaos that you're experiencing. And so you act out on it in this rebellious nature because it feels like everything's attacking you. And so to be unconscious of spirit within body, you are man, human, man of many colors. Who you are in the moment depends on the situation at hand. All these metaphors about, you know, changing faces, being two-faced, things like that. It's not that you're showing a fake side of yourself. It's that your ego is adapting. And I hate the word ego because you know what that word always has the connotation towards instead of what it actually is, which is just a protective mechanism that you came down on earth to use to adapt to your environment. But instead you hear ego and you think cocky ass nigga. But that's not what it really is. So I'm going to try my best to not refer to that term as the ego, but instead just the conscious. Because to be conscious is to utilize the ego as a tool. Because the ego is very wise. For it to have instantaneous adaptability, it obviously has a use. So this whole idea with enlightenment where it's like killing the ego, it's false. That's an illusion. And what I've started to realize now with spirituality as a whole is that uh, spirituality isn't even like what it is either. Even that's an illusion in a way. Because it... Its core idea is it teaches you to connect to something that's outside of yourself. That's still an external thing when we're talking about oneness. So instead of if someone tries to ask me what my belief is, I I can't even say spirituality. I can't say atheist either. And I'm definitely not going to say religious. I would say this current belief system or what this age of Aquarius, what we really embody, I would call it sacred secularity, where we understand the individual is what contributes to the collective because It's words that changes the world, and that's the sacred aspect of this. What's so sacred about the fact that we actually all have a voice, we all have a say in the experiences we have, because all of our experiences are valid, regardless of if there's a witness to see if the tree fell or not. You know what that whole, uh, I don't know what you'd call that category of uh, literature, but like the whole, if, if a tree falls and no one's around to hear it, did it actually make a sound? And, you know, to me, it's like, that's a stupid fucking question. Of course, it, of course it fell. The tree doesn't give a shit if somebody was watching it. The experience happened, therefore it happened. But it's also interesting because, you know, in your head, no, it didn't exist because you're not aware of that happening. This unawareness, the state of going through unawareness, going through life from a day-to-day basis, technically being in the present moment, but being held back by the past. This is something that the third dimension or... The vibrational frequency of the third dimension, the third dimensional state of awareness, needs to address to transition into the fourth. So how do you do that? So for the third dimension, the transition into the fourth, you need to do three things. Blame others for what has unfairly been done to you. You need to let that out. Blame yourself for getting into situations that blind you for no reason. You need to let that out as well. This is all about release, the third dimension. And finally, realize that this internal pain is all within your power to let go of. Because on a near daily basis, you function without it. This is how you become aware of the spirit within your body. So you have to understand that you have way more positive experiences than negative experiences, even though your perspective is telling you all I've had is a shitty life. This is just a fucking phase, mom, with like your bangs going all the way over your eyes and you're just you're frustrated with life because 
everyone seems to treat you unfairly and even your own thoughts betray you. And so I deeply empathize with that. But you have to understand that it's your responsibility to even understand why the fuck that's the case. See the pattern of your own insanity so that you can realize that the thing that you've been trying to hold from others, a.k.a. your shadow self, the part that you feel ashamed of showing others, you can utilize that as a tool to grow. Not only grow yourself, but grow others because they're seeing you empowered. And that's all that matters. That fake it till you make it shit is bullshit. You have to be it until you become. You have to be it until you're being. All right, so now let's talk about the fourth dimension. The fourth dimensional frequency is the whole, it's how humanity feels as a whole. All these emotions we bottled up, all these thoughts that we kind of suppress that we think that we go, oh, if I, if I say this out loud, then I'm a manifest it. But then you're thinking it. There's no separation between thinking and speaking. So you're not really doing anything by doing that. If anything, it's the whole, um, what my friend Alex says best, what you resist persists. It's the exact same thing. By resisting the thoughts that you claim are going to have an influence on the physical, uh, you're going to let that thought persist in the physical reality. It's funny because it's, it's kind of like this whole nature of praying. We're like, think about the words of praying, like praying, like being prayed on like an animal. You're always in this receptive state of wanting something you believe you can't get unless you have a middleman, a.k.a. the whole ritual of going on my knees and putting my hands together and shouting kumbaya. But like, this is why when you pray the most, you don't really get what you want. And it sucks because it's just like, is God betraying me? What's what's going on here? I don't, I, I've been doing good. I've been helping thy neighbor. I've been doing this, this, and that. I've been faithful, but I'm not getting what I want. Why is that? And you start to feel a, a tiny bit of resentment, not for God, but for yourself, because you feel like you, you still are unworthy of getting what you desired. And it's simply because to receive more, we must give out what we have received. And this works both ways, which is, of course, this is polarity. We're in an electromagnetic universe. Everything operates on polarity, the plus and the negative, the white and the black, the what's and the what. But still, this is all still a projection, like astral projection. This is an aspect of yourself that you're perceiving as external only because your focus on it is external. And it's really funny how this works because the entire universe is fluid. Everything is of fluid nature. That's why like what Bruce Lee says, like, be like water, because to embrace the nature of what the universe already is, you're golden because you embrace the idea of impermanence, that things, the good moments that you have, you don't have to hold on to them as like temporary moments. That's the only reason you hold on to it because you believe in your head that, oh, this passing moment, I'm never going to have something like this again. It's like, yeah, you're fucking right because your future experiences are going to be better once you've embraced that this is only one of many experiences I could possibly have. And that's what we're down here on earth for. Everything is essentially pointless. You give a point to it. You fill the things that you have with meaning. And so that gives you so much freedom or sovereignty that you're able to make do with what you have. So it doesn't matter what, how much money you got or what place you're at or how you look and all this other superficial bullshit. But the thing is, it's not really superficial. It's just your awareness or your focus is comfortable with seeing things as temporary but non-replenishing. And that's where this like half truth comes in in the fourth dimension, this polarity, this duality, where we have to think everything is up and down. But that's what we're here for. We're here to distinguish these directions because those directions were made in our head. And that's where the idea of flat earth comes from, where it's not I live on a fucking pizza disc in space and everything I'm looking at in terms of nature and the stars themselves are spherical. Is that you have a flat perspective of reality because you live in your head. All the experiences you have, you have to take yourself out of body. See the fourth dimension again. You have to realize that all these experiences have only been understood because they all have been taken from your head. Like Golgotha, the place of the skull. These are allegories. All these stories and whatnot that we've been told throughout our lives before we had a chance to really discern what's real and what's not. These are all allegories. There's all these layers of understanding. And it's exciting because you can look at all the things in the past that have claimed the brainwash you and see how... The layer above that was just trying to teach you something. But there was nobody actively telling you anything from that perspective because you didn't need to be told. This was something having to do with consciousness. This is a process of self-discovery, and it needs to be taken individually. You can't have one person saying, this is how this is, this is how this is, this is how that is. Because what's going to happen is what has happened right now in society, where all we've been told is shit, how shit is, how shit isn't. And so naturally, we want to rebel and be like, no, fuck you. Let's see if it's the other way. 
and then we prove it wrong, and then the society changes, and it keeps doing this flip-flop, a societal version of polarity, which is really cool. But in the age of Aquarius, we're meant to end this cycle because we're, we now have the two sides of the coin. We realize what it is. It's just a fucking coin. And the thing is that it's been minted by somebody else. We don't care who the somebody else is. We just don't want the damn coin no more. We don't do microtransactions in this bitch. This isn't fucking EA. This isn't all these other game companies that try to sell try to sell you something and then try to sell you a currency to sell you something else. That's so stupid. We're done with that shit in society where we need middlemans for everything, okay? So with the 4D, it's being exposed to all these middlemen and realizing that there's a simple way out of it. And it's how'd you find your own way in? All the answers come from within. You are the solution to your own confusion. The universe is mental and the cause is subconscious. So if you want to manifest anything in the reality, you consciously address what is unconscious to you. To you. You are a universe. One verse. One word. That is silence. Because silence is the one word that's everywhere. You see how that works? Life only reveals itself to those with a poetic perspective. And by embracing that, the nature of being like water, being formless, embracing the change as it occurs, because you're not attached to any of it. You're the one who observes it. So what stakes do I have in it other than the interactions I choose to commit to? And even those are bound to change. Does that not make me everything? How can I not say I am after realizing that? You know, be still and know that I am God. You hear that stillness? That's silence. Silence is golden. It's funny that that quote even exists. Silence is golden. Because gold has electromagnetic properties. That's our universe. Silence is electromagnetic. It's a melting pot of all the frequencies from the stars, from the individuals in each of these houses, the house itself, the stuff I got around me in this house, space, all the planets, the minerals, the crystals that form those planets, the platonic solids that make up everything in the universe. Everything goes full circle. That's why with the Zero Point Podcast, all meaning is found within the pointless. Because you can take what is simple and make it even simpler. Because everything is anything. So for the fourth dimension, what do you do? Very simple. Three things, just like the third dimension. Start seeing your hesitations from an out-of-body perspective. Start exhausting the ease of overthinking and how it creates the same predictable outcomes. You gotta wear that out. And finally, learn the fuck it mode through experiences that easily remind you about monotony. So, I actually really want to focus on that part right there where I said start exhausting the ease of overthinking and how it creates the same predictable outcome because this is very important. There's been a lot of times where you have a situation happen and you freeze up. If you want to transition from the fourth to the fifth, that's the opportunity. That's the opportunity right there for you to go, wait, I've had a situation like this before. I fucking froze up and I knew exactly what happened. Nothing. So fuck that. Let's see what happens this time. Not because I'm invested in how a person will react or what could hypothetically happen that doesn't even exist, but because I want to know for myself. I want my spirit to know that I can endure this because I am my spirit. The fuck? And it's so funny because every time I've been presented with situations that would be so easy for me to freeze up, I exhaust my ability to overthink because I realize it's pointless. And then I just do the thing that I was scared of anyways. And every fucking time I do it, it works out because I had no expectations. It's just like this uh, thing I was reading. I was reading more about non-attachment because that's what I'm studying, studying currently right now in the fifth dimension, uh, really embracing non-attachment, being in the state of the flow, being like water. And uh, he made up a good point. And it was just that, you know, your friend makes a sandwich for you. Like you eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich every day. And one day your friend offers to make it. And you're like, okay, whatever. A little suspicious, but whatever. You take a bite into it and it has soy sauce in it. You're like, what the fuck is this garbage? But the thing is, if you've never had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich before, and this nigga still put that soy in there, you would have took the the bite, the same bite you took in this alternate reality, and enjoyed that shit. Because you had no expectations for what a peanut butter and jelly and soy sandwich would have tasted like. 
You would have just ate that shit and took it as it is. Being in the now. And so that's that's a perfect example of non-attachment where like we get in these situations like trying to talk to a girl or something like that along those lines and you freeze up. That's the opportunity to say, fuck it. What other thing can I logicize by just jumping into it? Not even having the time to think. I already done enough time thinking to get there. I'm done with it. It's exhausting. I already know what's going to happen. The same predictable outcome. Nothing. Nothing new. So embrace change in that way by challenging the way you overthink. Get tired of it. Realize how useless it is because it's a waste of energy. So learn the fuck it mode through experiences that easily remind you about monotony. Remember all the times where you've been in similar situations and you held back and you knew what happened when you held back. Regret, grief, regret, grief, regret, grief, suffering. Because now suffering comes from you looking back at those things and you realize it's a pattern. See your pattern of insanity and utilize that as a tool to move forward because you can break out of the patterns you've created. You are the creator of those patterns. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I never even said the fourth dimension what it was. (laughs) The fourth dimension, I put conscious of reality without essence. So with the third dimension, you're unconscious of spirit within body. But in the fourth dimension, we have so much information. The age of Aquarius, the age of information, in fact. You're conscious of reality without essence. You know the the multi-layered nature of the universe. But without your own individual essence, how do I tackle anything? How do I not get consumed or owned by the things that are trying to actively control me? Like social media. Like psychological engineering. We were talking about this, uh, me and my friends on the Skype call. And how these designs, even slowly, like you notice like on Pornhub, how... Now you can like you know, you put your mouse over and it previews the on the it previews the video on the thumbnail before you even click it. So like they know we're impatient as fuck and they utilize that so we get more we stay on these sites and it drains us emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually. But they don't care because this is about money. But who the fuck cares if that's even their motive? We know what they're doing, not why they're doing it. That's kind of irrelevant. So now it's your decision to choose if you want to stay or remain consumed by those things. I have a sort of non-attachment to social media now where I'm not I'm not going on these infinite scrolling platforms where I know I'm going to be on there for four hours if I really wanted to from pure intent because I know what they're doing. That's part of the design. You know, it's like this whole idea of the matrix. Same thing with social media. That is the matrix. It convinces you that we're more separate than we really are because people are really only showing their best selves. But it's not in the superficial way. I can't take it like that anymore where you have FOMO, like the fear of missing out. It's more just like, We only really want to project positivity because most of our lives feel overshadowed with negativity, either by others or our own inner demons. That's why people don't like being in their own silence and something that must be embraced in the fourth dimension because that's how you're going to be able to be conscious of reality with an essence, a.k.a. transitioning into the fifth dimension. Emergence with the subconscious, okay? This is where we're at right now. Your emergence with the subconscious, the fifth dimension. The fifth dimension is interesting because you're you're aware of what you're not aware of and you embrace this. The goal of meditation isn't to understand complexity, it's to become familiar with it. And so all meditation really is is an absence of stimulus because you, you're aware of your presence. You're only aware of your presence. And that's why uh, it seems very unconventional to meditate now in this the society that we've been born in because we have stimuli everywhere. We take coffee every fucking morning. We got to go watch TV. We got to watch the same Netflix shows in the middle of doing something else. We're told to multitask and be productive as fuck for no particular reason other than to benefit people we don't care about. And we don't even understand why we were put in this like selfish, self-centered matrix of wanting to benefit ourselves before anyone else. But it's because we were already born into this world where you're told, hey, survive, do step one through three, you'll be good for the rest of your life. And then you do it because you're being obedient, which is what you were trained in school. And you're like, this shit ain't working. This ain't living up to it. It's like the whole idea of heaven and hell where it's like, when you go to heaven or hell, what's next? What the fuck do you do after that? And so that that already tells you right there, these are like man-made values. These are man-made projections of what we think the afterlife is because we're still always constantly scared of death. And I think that's a very interesting concept because I'm not really afraid of death. 
I'm more afraid of missing out of experiences that I may have been presented with during the present moment, aka just normal regret. And so I adjust that by not going, oh, I should be a, a God-fearing man. I am God. I can create my own experiences. We are all creators of this reality. But it's being co-created by the structure that the universe has already provided. That's what real God is, the sacred geometry among all of us, the silence around us. The actual virtues we have created as a result of our own reflection on ourselves. And the same reflection we see in others when they're treating us unfairly. We can look at them and be like, you're literally a manifestation of myself, of how I could or how I've used to be. And so I don't need to treat you with disrespect or harm in the way that you have done me. Because we're the same people. I'm only hurting myself by being mad at you. So how about I try something different? How about I go in my fucking mode and say something that just completely throws you off and actually activate your inner child, actually gives you vitality because all through your life, you've only been presented with harshness. So all you're expecting from others is more harshness. Remember that quote I said, to receive more, we must give out what we have received. It works both ways with negative and positive experiences. It's still your focus on it. The universe isn't doing this to you. So it's the fifth dimension. It's this vibration of authority, self-authority, self-initiative, the I am presence. Riding with the flow of what goes on because you realize all the synchronicity and coincidence is only relative to your own focus. If you're always focused on how lucky you are in life, hell yeah, the, the few things that line up in your life, you're going to call it coincidence. But when you realize that there's no luck involved when this is an intention-based universe, you realize that everything lines up for a reason. It doesn't matter how subtle it is. And that it's really your focus to choose to be into these rabbit holes such as numerology where it's like, I got to look at the time every three minutes and then that means something. Or having to like light an incense every week or having to pray every three days, or all this, all this, all that. Human values. There's another quote, actually, from this book I was reading called Masters, Masters and Teachings of the Far East, I think it was called. And he says, All mortal limitations are but man-made, and in no other way should they be interpreted. I resonate with that so much, because that's what it feels like. These values, there's been so many times where you've been tested in reality about something that you, you supposedly can't do. And you do it just because you were told you can't. That applies to everything. You can't hold a belief like that and then pick and fucking choose. Go, oh, I, I'm really I'm really passionate about doing this one thing, but, you know, other people, you know, when I talk to them about it, they're not as interested as me. They're not enthusiastic as me. They don't have that same, they don't have that same fire in them. No fucking shit. You created that. You use that energy and show them that you can create it because that creation progress is what is going to influence them to do what they wanted to do, but they were holding back on because they experienced the same shit. They were interested in something else and they tried to talk to people about it. And with the law of attraction they're in because they were put in the low frequency by their environment, they feel like they can't act on their dreams because nobody else around them is acting on their dreams. It's this whole thing with like with family that I can mostly relate to where it's this whole generational poverty. And so you feel like this, this, there's this huge societal barrier over you when really it's an illusion. It's a pattern of people being comfortable with where they are, yet complaining about where they are. It's this lack of inner curiosity that creates the complacency that we see in society, that creates this this stagnation that we see everywhere, where people have issues, but we're proud to talk about it. But not only are we proud to talk about it, but we're proud to encourage those problems in others instead of trying to go through our own process of understanding where the fuck they even came from and not resenting anybody for those things of the past happening. Just seeing them as they are. They happened. How can one move forward from it? And so for the fifth dimension, if you're transitioning from the fourth to the fifth, do these three things as with the third and fourth dimension. Stop comparing your present opportunities with past outcomes. It's irrelevant. Stop judging your present opportunities with the future's hypotheticals. The future doesn't exist. Understand this. Resonate with it. Practice it. And when I say practice it, practice it by just thinking about all the scenarios where you you were overthinking and then the outcome did not turn out the way you expected it. But actually, you kind of did expect it because, of course, it wasn't going to be exactly as your thoughts scripted it. And think about it. If you really had that ability, it'd be really depressing. It'd be like uh, from Netflix, from... uh, 
Jessica Jones, but the Purple Man. He has the ability to compel anyone to do what he says. But because of this, and this is just his natural power, because of this, he's grown up just getting everything he wants, and he doesn't like that. He likes chance. He wants variety. He wants the ability to experience risk. Because it's not fun having all that you want. Because part of the fun of getting what you want is that you fucking earned it. It wasn't handed to you. So finally, learn non-attachment through experiences that easily remind you about impermanence. And this is what I was saying with the fourth dimension, like the data opportunity I was saying, where you want to break out of the patterns that you realize have created what you expected, which is nothing. No, no change in the pattern of, oh, could this happen? Could that happen? You need to keep going out and experiencing things that remind you, hey, the good and the bad, they don't last forever. I'm in the middle because I'm on the middle path. I see things for what they are, nothing more. I call out my emotional prejudices in the moment because I realize that they're temporary states. And this is what I was saying also on that Skype call last night, where the only problem I really have with the medical industry, aside from the whole they've never actively really cured anything, and that their pure interest is making money for the uh, the pharmaceutical industry, which is obvious to most people, is simply that they've created static labels for dynamic mind frames. So like things like depression and anxiety and whatever, and all these illnesses and whatnot. They, they tell us that these states are static when in reality they only exist because of the environment you're in. The environment you're in is static. There was another uh, quote I saw where it was like, before you self-diagnose yourself with depression, anxiety, this, this, and that, uh, just make sure you're not surrounded by assholes first. <laughs> and that was, that was pretty funny to me because that, that partly reigns true and is an influence on why you have inner demons. It's most of the time because you, you, feel t- you feel like you're too open to others when it's not necessarily really true. A lot of the times when you're in a state of self-discovery, you're excited to tell others. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And uh, we have this false expectation of assuming that people should reciprocate how we feel when that isn't really necessary, nor was even your, your prime intent for even sharing experience. You just want to express. You just want to have an outlet of expression. You don't necessarily care if uh, someone particularly understands it or not. It's just that ends up being the symptom of heartache. You know, we tell someone something really meaningful to us, and they take that, and they throw that shit to the garbage because they're like, oh, sorry, can't relate. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. How could you say that? And those things hurt. But what really hurts is our expectation towards what we wanted them to say, not the actual process of us saying, damn, I had an experience, I'm going to share it. You should continue doing that. It's important for your health. And if you feel like you can't do that with the people you're around, post it online. Because there's more people than your family or your friends group if they're not approving of it. There's, there's a lot more people outside of that sphere of influence that care about hearing your experiences and understanding how you got to where you are. That's all we want to know about each other, how we got to where we are. That's why small talk even exists, this bullshit where we're like, oh, hey, how are you doing? All right. That's like the first lie we do, the the, the subtle, the most subtle lie we do, saying you're okay. No, the fuck you're not. I see your face. But no one feels comfortable with taking the face off, taking the mask off, this layer of false reality that we think that we have to always be happy, that we have to always be depressed. These are illusions. It's our focus that stops this flow of water, which is the motions of the universe. It has a very simple solution. Understand that self-realization is God-realization. And that's the transition from the fifth to the sixth dimensional perspective. The fifth to the sixth dimensional awareness. Self-realization is God-realization. But yeah, that's, that's all I had to say today. I'm glad I got to talk about that. A podcast last video, how to transition into the consciousness levels. Um, thank you for listening. If you like, uh, just share a like. Uh, I like to see that other people are reciprocating uh, what I'm speaking on because if it's not liked, then I'll figure out ways to break it down even simpler. I take it as an internal challenge. I don't see it personally. I don't go, oh, man, this person doesn't like me. I see it as I wasn't speaking clear enough. And I'll speak better next time. This is the Zero Point Podcast. 
where all meaning is found within the pointless. But if you're on YouTube, this is D.I. Drayton. Have a good day. My personal power comes from my imagination My vision never gonna shake just cause you wanna say shit It's 11-11 as I say that shit too, it's funny My brother's on the loose and I don't know why he's running It hurts, V2K might put him on a shirt Sometimes I forget the synchronicities Whenever I get hurt I tend to harden up like hickory It's dead wood, making jokes about shit that usually hits me That's why I work, put two shots in my brain Watch them call that shit a suicide I'm gonna change the world, it's not important if it's do or die I've been feeling like no one else Trying to find God inside of my shadow self Direct the blame and watch it affect my health Hide from the shame and see it light up my shell Digging water from a pile of sand I have the energy to not make a plan Meditate to find the state all is well Who is your God when you had known you had felt? You dig?